When I was little, I lived on this huge farm in the remote west of Ireland. It was so huge, it stretched as far as the eye could see. Or so I thought. I'm bigger now. Well, a little bit bigger. <laughs> and I realize it never really was that huge at all. To be honest, it's only a few small fields surrounded by the vast, wild bog. By the way, that's nothing rude. It just means Irish for moorland or wetland, you might say. But anyways, when I was a toddler, it really did seem huge, vast, and unexplored. Where our fields ended, the sky began, and I couldn't wait to get out there and explore and play. But there was a problem, a problem with my feet. Nothing permanent or serious, luckily, but there was a problem. You see, I've always been small. I was born a tiny baby, incubator tiny, in fact. So from day one, everyone around me, mom, dad, my older brothers, community nurses, everyone, they were always on my case, egging me on to grow. Go on, grow! <laughs> the encouragement, it was relentless. They even sang silly little songs to encourage me, like, Cute little Maureen's two foot tall, do da, do da. Cute little Maureen's two foot tall, oh, do da day. Yeah, I know, embarrassing, right? <laughs> but by the time I was almost two years old, my feet had remained rather obstinately tiny. No shoes would fit me. No outdoor shoes, anyway. Nothing that would put up with my splashing in muddy puddles and whatever else I wanted to do. On rare dry days, I would be allowed outside, barefoot, but it would almost always end in tears. You see, out here in rural Ireland, the wild west as we call it, it's no place for tender toddler feet. Almost everything is armed to the teeth with prickles, thistles and thorns lying in wait like nature's ninjas. <laughs> so most of the time I'd be confined, confined to the house, watching out as my brother, brothers would play football all day long, climb the trees and run around after the animals. I felt so left out, but there was nothing I could do. My mother had scoured every single shop top to bottom for a proper pair of shoes for me, but with no luck. She even enlisted an army of shoe scouts, aunties, uncles, cousins, random neighbours. <laughs> to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if she got the postman involved as well. <laughs> but finally, one day, a day I'll always remember, I got my first pair of shoes. These little red shoes were presented to me as my whole family gathered round to watch me as I opened this tiny little box. Needless to say, I was absolutely delighted, ecstatic. Those shoes practically danced me out of the house and over the hills, and I never looked back. There was something else in that shoebox, though. Independence, courage, curiosity, a sense of adventure, and most importantly, resilience. As I'd be out there all day long, playing to my heart's content, I'd, I realized that, I learned that I had to pick myself up if I fell, wipe up the mud and the blood and the tears and get back in the game. I realized as I got older, throughout my childhood, over many injuries, I was very accident prone, I remember a few years ago, I broke my leg and I had to go through this horrible journey on a bouncy, to say the least, road up to the hospital. And it's one of these occasions that I realized I'll be carrying the determination and this resilience with me for the rest of my life. And I know I'm not the only person here. Other rural young people just like me, have that same 
determination, the same shoebox of skills. Now that I'm 16 and getting ready to expand my horizons once again, I hope to go to university in Dublin, the capital city of our Emerald Isle, and I can't wait. For me, a rural teen, growing up on the margins of everything, with very little opportunities or things to do, city life is going to be amazing. There'll be so many things that I simply have never seen in rural areas before. There'll be shops, cafes, museums, restaurants, not to mention the proper services, hospitals, universities, and public transport. There'll be buses, taxis, and trains. I can't believe it. I am not that naive, though. I realize there'll be more prickles, thistles, and thorns ahead. Where will I live? Will I be able to afford it? And I know I'm not the only one worrying about this. Young people across the world are having the same worries and facing the same problems. But I know that with the shoebox of skills that we acquired many years ago, that will guide us along the way. We all want to contribute, make the world a better, fairer place, or simply just to make a start in life. We just have to make some extra steps to do so, compared to the city kids. So let's reimagine rural and city life in a sustainable way to keep our countryside and planet viable. I know we're all asking the same question. Can rural life one day offer the same advantages as the big city? I really hope so. Wouldn't it be so lovely to think that my generation, our kids, our grandkids could have the choice between rural or urban life? So let's support and invest in our rural communities. Build affordable homes, expand remote working and broadband, and bring public transport in so that we can be connected to the wider world just as much as anyone else. Well, who knows what the future holds for me and my generation. But what I do know is that for my red shoes, I'm so grateful for them. Because when I was younger, they took me on so many adventures when I was younger. But they always, always brought me back home safe. My very own ruby slippers. Thank you.